So you want to create an e-commerce shop using Remix.1, Sanity, Stripe, Zust and as State Manager? Well, you have come to the right video because that's what we will learn today. So let's stop talking and let's check out the demo on my screen. We are now on my screen and as you can see, we can see the deployed version of what we will build today. So we have an e-commerce shop. If we scroll down a bit, you will see our products and if I click on one product, you will see we will get redirected to the product page where we have some images. Now I can select some images and you will see that the top image will change. Now if I click on add to back, you will see that the shopping cart changes and we have an item inside of it. If I click now on checkout, you will see we will get redirected to Stripe checkout. Inside of here you will now see our product with the name and the pricing. Now I can enter my data and click pay. Since I have now added all the data, I will click on pay and you will see we get a loading state and it will redirect us to our success page where we can now see that everything has been successful and we can go back to our home page. Well, that's what we will build today, so let's get started. So, to get started, we will go to the Remix.1 website and I will click Redox, but before I do that, I would highly suggest you guys to read through that website because I really like it and I think it's really informative and I think you will learn a lot about Remix. So, let's go to Read the Docs and right here we have a command to initialize Remix. I will copy that and go to my terminal. I will cd in my desktop directory and cd in my YouTube directory and I will paste the command. Now in a second it will ask me for a name. I will name it Sanity Ecommerce YouTube. And as a uh, stack we will just use the basics and as our deployment target uh, I will use Vercel but you of course could use fly.io but Vercel is just much, much easier. So I will click that and I will also use TypeScript and we will click install. So Remix has finished installing and I will now go back to my Visual Studio code and as you see I already opened the project but you can open your project under file and open folder. And the first thing I want to do is install Tailwind CSS. So I will go to the Tailwind CSS website and click docs. Then I will click on Framework Guides and Remix. So right here they have provided a quick start guide and we have already done uh, the step one. So I will go to step two and enable built-in Tailwind CSS support. So let's copy Tailwind through. Let's go to our remix.config.js and in the modules.export let's paste that. So now let's continue. Step three is to install Tailwind CSS. So I will copy that go back and open the terminal. Once that's finished installing, I will go back and right here we will have to configure our template paths. So let's copy content, the content path right here. So I will go to tailwind.config.ts and right here I will uh, delete content and paste what we have just copied. Now we will have to add the Tailwind CSS directives. So I will copy them. I will go back and right in our app folder I will create a new file called tailwind.css and let's paste that. The next step is to import the CSS file. So let's copy that again. Let's go to the root.tsx. Let's delete the CSS bundle href and I will paste what we have just copied. Also, I will delete on top the CSS bundle href. Now let's go back again and as you see, we have done all steps and the last step is pretty much to start our build process. But before we do that, I want to install a dev dependency from Tailwind CSS. And if you want to do the same, go to my GitHub readme and just copy the command. So I will paste that right here. That's a development dependency from Tailwind CSS. And that's pretty much used for the uh, aspect ratio. Now I will go back to the tailwind.config.ts. Let me close my terminal. And right in the plugins table, I will paste the command and all it tells uh, Tailwind is to pretty much bundle the Tailwind CSS plugin that we have installed, the aspect ratio plugin. And that's all we need for now. And right now we also won't use it, but at a later stage you will see where we will need that. So now let's continue. I will close that and I will also have to install a few more dependencies that I also copy from my GitHub. So let me open my terminal. 
Let me clear everything and let me paste that right here. So, what are those commands? The first package we install is Zustand and Zustand is in State Manager. It's similar to Redux but it's much easier and the bundle size is also much smaller than Redux so I would definitely use Zustand. And Stripe is our payment gateway and we will also use it for the hosted uh, checkout page. Then we have two packages from Sanity and Sanity as you know probably is a headless CMS that we will use. And the first one is the client, we will use that to connect to Sanity and fetch data. And Sanity image URL is a package to connect images or to create images. And the last package is Headless UI React and Headless UI is a component library, but we will have to style it with Tailwind CSS. So let me click enter and let it install. So now we have installed all packages. I will now close the terminal. And the first thing I want to start with is Sanity. So let's go to the Sanity IO website. And firstly, what is Sanity? Sanity is a headless CMS that pretty much is used to create content and store content. And we will use Sanity to store our products and the data of our products. So to get started, let's click on developers and let's click documentation. And now let's go on getting started. And right here we will click create a project. Then we will scroll down a bit and we will see this command. So let me copy that. Let's go back to Visual Studio Code. I will again open the terminal, I will clear it, and let me paste it. Now, what does this term, uh, this command mean? First of all, we create a new Sanity project at latest. We use the template, which is clean, so we don't use an e-commerce template or a blog template. It's completely clean, and we have to create our own schemas. And then we create a project, which we name Sanity Project, and we use the dataset production. But right here, I want to change the name, so let me change that. I think we will just call it Sanity E-Commerce YouTube, but you can change that of course. Now let me click enter. As you see right here, it tells me I already have an account. If this message does not pop up for you, that means probably you don't have an account or you don't have linked your account to VS Code, so do that and that would work. Right here it asks me for a project output path and I will call it Sanity. Then of course we will use TypeScript and now it should ask us if we want to use npm and we will use npm. So Sanity is done installing and what I want to do now is first of all close my terminal and let's go back to the website and right here you have a tab create a schema let's click that and you will see how a Sanity file layout works and if we go back that's also the same we have so if i go under sanity you see right here our pretty much our project path and instead of using js we use ts since we use typescript and to continue we will just uh, scroll down a bit and they show an example how to create a schema and all you have to do is export default and name it and give the fields and that's also pretty much the same we will do so let's go back and under schemas, we will create a new file and we will name that product.ts. And inside of here, the first thing we will do is export default empty object. Now inside of here, we will have to name it. So the name will be product lowercase. Then we will have a title where I will uppercase the P. And then the type will be document. Then we will have to give some fields. So the fields will be an array of objects and the first one will be just the name of the product. So the name is name, the type will be string and then the title will be name again but with an uppercase n. Then the next field I want is the price. So we will have a name of price. Then we will have a type which is a number since we want the price to be a number and not a string. and then I want also to give it a title, which will be again price. The next field I want to create is the slug and we will give it a name of slug. The type will be also of type slug and the title will also be slug. Now underneath that, I want to create a new field, which will be the description. So let's again give it a name. The name will be description. The title will also be description. 
and then the type of it will not be string. Uh, the type will be text. Now why do I use text? String is mostly used to create one line of text and text is used to create multi-line of text. And since our description is a bit longer, I want to use multi-line text and that's why I use the type text. Now under this, I want to create a new field and right now you won't understand what it is. It's the Stripe product ID, but we will use it later to connect to Stripe. So right now let's just create the name Stripe product ID and the type will be just a basic string. And another field I want to create is now the images and they are probably also the most important. So let's give it a name of image and in type we will give an array. Now probably if you go a bit through the Sanity website you will see that you can also use the type of image. But type of image is only used to select one image. And since our products will have multiple images and to be exact I think there will be always four images for our products we will want to use an array. But right now this won't work, so let's also give it an, a title of image. And we will also have to tell Sanity what type of array this will be. So the type of array will be an image. And also I want to use an options field. And the options will have hotspot will be true. Now what's hotspot? Let's go right here. Let's click search and let's write hotspot right here. Let's scroll down a bit and if we scroll down a bit you will see right here hotspot and hotspot makes it possible to responsively adapt images to different aspect ratios at display time. The default value for hotspot is false but we have set it to true. Now that's all we need. If I now go back into my terminal I will clear everything. I will cd into sanity and run npm run dev. This will now open at localhost 3333. I will copy that, I will go back to Chrome and let me paste it right here. It will now ask you to log in with your provider with which you have created your account and also linked your VS code. That's for me GitHub, so let me do that. And once we are loaded into the Sanity Studio, you will right away see we have an error. No document types um, have been created or defined. So what's the error? If we go back, and let's right here go into schemas and into the index.ts. You will see we just export an empty array. And that's not what we want to do. We want to export the schema we have just created, product. So inside of this empty array, I will just write product and import it. So TypeScript does the heavy lifting. And right here we have imported product from product. And if we save that now and I go back, you'll see we have now content, which is product. And if I create a new product, we have all the fields we want. Now, one thing I see right away, if I create a name, so let's say Nike Air Max, I have to create my own slug and I don't want that. So what do I have to do for that? I will again go to the product.ts and inside of slug, I will again use the options and I will give in source, which will be name. If I save that, go back, you will see that I now can generate the slug based on the name. So let me click generate and as you see it generates a slug based on the name. And now let me delete that again since I don't want to create a Nike Air Max, delete now. I want to create the products that I've already defined. And if you want to use the same, go to my GitHub and just copy all them. There, right there, there will be the images and also the product text and I will do that now. So I have now created all my products and one thing I also wanted to mention is right here under the image tab I wouldn't really go on add item because if I click add item it will only allow me to select one image. So go to the images folder and just select all and just drop them into the tab and it will accept all of them so you don't have to manually always add one image. Also look out that everything is published correctly so let me click publish. And now we can continue again with Visual Studio Code. Since we have now created the content in Sanity.io, I of course want to connect to Sanity to fetch that data. So for that, I will go into the app folder and create a new folder called lib. 
and inside of the slip I will create a new file called sanity.ts. Now inside of sanity.ts I want to import create client from sanity client and I want to create a few constants that we will need to create the client. So the first will be const project id which will be an empty string for now. We will also have a const data set which will also be an empty string and we will also have a const API version which will also be an empty string. Now for the API version we will use 2023.01.01 and for the data set we will go to the sanity.io website so not anymore localhost 3333 and then you will click on login and find the project we have just created and then you will land right at this page. Now right here there's a data set tab so let me zoom in a bit. A data set tab, let me click that and as you see the title or the name of our data set is production. So right here data set it will be production. Now we will also have to add the project ID so let me go back let me go up a bit and right here you will see the project ID so let me copy that let's go back and let's just paste it. So now all our constants are defined. Now we will have to create our client. So let's write export const client equals to create client. And right here we will pass our project ID. We will pass our data set and our API version. Also I will use use CDN true because we want to use the sanity CDN. Since we're now completely finished with sanity, I want to create the user interface. So let me close again everything and maybe let's check out the index page. And the index page is called underscore index.tsx and that's the default template Remix ships with. And I don't want to use that, so I will just delete everything right here. Or let me actually delete everything and I will use a shortcut called RAFCE and let's name it index page. If you want to use the same shortcut, I would go to the extensions tab and install ES7 Plus React Redux React Native Snippets. So let's continue and I will just name it like that for now. Let's also go into a root folder or root file just to see it again. And I think what I want to start with is the navbar. So let's create the dev server. I will create a new terminal tab right here on the plus icon and I will just run npm run dev. Now this will load a bit and it will open localhost 3000. So let me just copy that and as you see we have some errors from Tailwind CSS but that's not important for us right now. So let's go here, let's open a new tab and I will paste localhost 3000. And as you see we have now our index page right, he right here. But I want to create a nav bar on top. So for that I will go back and right in the app folder, or let me close again everything, in the app folder I will create a components folder and inside of the components I want to create a navbar.tsx. Inside of the navbar I want to again use the RFC shortcut and I will just name it navbar and I think we can start already with the interface or user interface. So let's use empty brackets and right here inside of them we will create a header and let's style that header, let's give it a relative class and a z10. Inside of the header I want to create a div, so let's style that div. The div will have an bg white and inside of this div I want to create another div and let me style that div, so let's give it a class name of border button and border gray 200. Now let me save this file to format everything. And inside of this div I want to create a new div, so let me style that. It will have a class name of max, width will be 7xl, and we will have mx auto, px will be 4, sm will be px6, and lg will be px8. Now inside of this div I want to create another div, and let me style that div, so let's give it a class name, which will be h16, flex, items will be center, then we will have justify between. And now let's create a last div and we will just give it a class name which will be flex and items will be center. Now inside of this div I want to create a link component which we import from Remix One React. As you see I haven't imported that. 
So let me import that from Remix One React. And as you see, TypeScript complains, and that's because we have to use the two prop. So I will do and two. And for now, let me, or not for now, I will actually just um, link it to the slash, and the slash is just the index page. So inside of the link, I want to create an h1 tag. And right here, let me write tag. And I want to use a span. And right here, I will write connect. So the name will be tag connect of our web shop. Now, let me style that h1 tag for now. So I will give it a class name of text will be 2xl. And font will be semi bold. And I will also style the span. So let's give it a class name of text indigo 600. Now, if I save that and go back to localhost 3000, you won't see anything, and that's because we haven't pretty much connected it. So let me go to the root.tsx, and let me actually create a layout function. So right here, I will do a function with an uppercase layout, and now let me return something. So I will do return empty brackets. Inside of the br empty brackets, I want to use navbar. I will import that from our components navbar. And right now, I will also have to get our children because I want to show them also. So I want to also show our index page under the navbar. So for that, I will write here the structure children. And right here, TypeScript complains because it does not know what children is. And for that, we will give it a type. So children will be of type React node. And as you see, um, React does not import that for me automatically, so I will go on top and click Import Empty uh, Object from React. And I want to import React Node. Now let me change that down here, and as you see, everything works. Now under the navbar, I want to create a main element, and I will just use the children right here. And even though we don't have any errors now, it still won't work. And for that to work, I want to pretty much wrap everything from outlet to live reload inside the layout. So I will copy that right now. I will use our layout and I will just paste it back. So right now, all of these items are wrapped inside of the layout component. So let me save that. Let's go back to localhost. And right here, you will see our navbar and also our index page, which are the children, as you know. So now let's go back to our navbar.tsx and under the link and under the div, I want to create a button. So let's use a button. And right here we will use an SVG, but for now let's just style that button. So let's give it a class name of group. Minus margin will be two, P will be two, flex and items will be center. Also, it will have an on click. So for now, let's just write an empty function. And as you know, I want to use an SVG right here because this will be the shopping cart button. So I will go to the website heroicons.com and let me search for the shopping bag. So I will use the shopping bag. I have copied the JSX and let me paste it right here. This will already have a class name given, but I want to change that class name. So let's write a new class name. We will have flex, shrink will be zero. Then we will have a height of 6 and width of 6 and I want to use text gray 400 and a group hover will be text gray 500. That's good. If we go back, we will see a shopping bag on the right corner, but I will also want to use a number field on the right since I want to show the items that are inside of the shopping bag. So I will go back and under the SVG, I will create a span. Let's just use a zero for now, but we of course will change it to a dynamic value later. Let's give it a class name. It will have ML2, text will be small, font will be medium, text will be white, BG will be red 500, PX will be free, PY will be one, and rounded will be full. Now if we save that and go back, you see we have now a fully functional navbar we have our shopping bag and we have the number of card items right here. And now I want to continue with creating the index page. And the first thing you will see right now that the margin does not look the same. So we have here such a big margin and here the index page goes right to the corner of the screen. 
So let me go to the root.tsx and inside of here I want to give the main element in class name which will be class name max width will be 7xl, mx will be auto, px will be 4, sm will have an px of 6 and lg will have an px of 8. Let's save that. And now if we go back you see both the nav and the index page have the same margin or padding. And now I want to go to the index.tsx, which will be underscore index.tsx, and I want to create a hero. So I think we should just start and style that. So let me just go right here. Let's delete return. And let's create uh, empty brackets. And inside of the empty brackets, I want to use a section. And let me style that section. Let's give it a flex. Flex will be call. Justify will be between. We will have a gap which will be 6, we will also have an SM of gap 10, MD will have a gap of 16 and LG will be flex row. Also margin top will be 12. Now inside of the section I want to create a div and let's style that div, let's give it a class name of flex, flex will be call, justify will be center, SM will be text center, LG will be PY12, LG will be text left, and we will also use XL will be width 5 twelfths, and I also want to use XL will be P padding Y24. Now let's save that. Now inside of this div I want to create a P tag, and let me style that P tag. Let's give it a class name of margin bottom will be 4, font will be semi bold, and also text will be indigo 600, also medium will be margin bottom of 6, md will have text of lg, and xl will have text of xl, and we will also have to name our p tag. So I will do welcome to my shop exclamation mark, just like that. And if I save that and go back, we see it right here. Welcome to my shop. Now under the p tag I want to create an h1 tag and let's style that h1 tag so I will give it a class name which will have text will be black, margin bottom will be 8, text will be 4xl, font will be bold, sm will be text 5xl and md will be margin bottom of 12 and md will have a text of 6xl. And inside of the H1, I want to give it a name. So let's do focus on tag that matters. Now under the H1, I want to create another P tag. So let's do P tag and let me style that P tag. So I will give it a class name of margin bottom will be eight. Leading will be relaxed. And we will also have a text gray of 500. Medium will have a margin bottom of 12. LG will have a width of four fifths and XL will have text LG. Now right here I also want to give a small description so I will copy that from my GitHub repo but you could also write your own description if you want. Now under the P tag I want to create a new div element and inside of the div element I want to create a link that we again import from Remix1 React. It will again complain because we will have to give it the two prop so I will do two and we'll use the hashtag products. So right now we haven't created an ID called products, but I will do that later and we'll explain it also later. Now I will also give it a class name. So let's do class name, which will have a rounded of LG, PG will be indigo 600, PX will be eight, PY will be three, text will be center. We will also have text will be small, font will be semi-bold, text will be white, outline will be none. Let me close the explorer. We will also have a ring which will be indigo 300 and let's use also a transition and a duration of let's say for now 100. Also I want to use a medium of text base and inside of here I want to give it a name and let's name it shop now. And let me save that. Let's go back to our web page and you see it right here. Let me zoom out a bit. And in my opinion, that looks great. 
And as you see, the white uh, side is right now empty and I want to use an image for that. So I will go back and under the link and under the two divs, so right before the section, I want to create a new div. So let me create a div. Let's style that div. Let's give it a class name here of h48. Overflow will be hidden. I want to use rounded of lg. bg will be gray 100 and shadow, shadow will be lg, lg will be h auto and xl will be width 5 twelfths. And right here I want to create an image tag. So I will create an alt for now. Let's give it an product, product image. So if you would create a real e-commerce shop, I would of course use a different alt tag. But right now, since SEO is not important for us, I will just leave it like that. And let's also give it a class name, which will be H full, W full, object will be cover, and we will also have an object, which will be center. So now we have to create a source, or we don't have to create a source, but we have to give an image tag for the source. So I will go to pexels.com and I will search for e-commerce Apple. And I will use this image right here, but you can use actually any image you want. So I'll we'll click on that, click on open image in new tab. And let me just copy that URL and I will go into my source and paste it. Now, if you want to use the same image, just go to the GitHub and copy that image. Now, let me save that. Let me close everything right here. Let's go to localhost. And as you see, we pretty much finished the hero page. We have created our titles, we have created our description, our button and our hero image. But the most important thing is still missing and that's the products. So I would suggest to do that right now. So let's go down a bit. And now under the section, we will create a new section. Now let's give the section an ID. And this ID will be the same as up here. So you see, we link to hashtag products. So I will use it as an ID products. So let's do that. Now, if we click this link or this button, however you want to see that, we will just link to this ID, which is products. Now inside of the section, I will create a new div. And let me style that div. So let's give it a class name of padding will be 24. We'll have an SM, which will be PY32. Not 43, but 32, and LG will be padding top of 32. Now inside of this div, I will create a new div, and let me style that div. So let's give it a class name, which will be empty of 6, grid, grid will be called 2, and we will have a gap of X, which will be 4, we will have a gap, which will be Y, 10, and an SM of gap X, 6, MD will be grid calls 4 and we will have an MD of gap Y 0 and also the last style will be LG gap X 8. Now what we will do now inside of this dip is map over our products. But as you know we don't have any products right now or we have products in headless CMS in Sanity but we don't fetch them right now. So let's do that. Let's go on top of our page. So if you didn't know, Remix uses a convention called uh, loaders and actions. And loaders are used to pretty much fetch data and actions are used to pretty much post data. So you can think of it, loaders are used for uh, the type get and actions are used for the type post. And since we want to get data from Sanity, we will use a loader. And all you have to do is an export async function called loader we will use a type called loader args and let's just create the function. Now inside of here we have to query our data from sanity.io but most probably you don't know how to do that and that's because Sanity uses a customly created Quark language that they have created themselves and if you would like to learn more about that go into the search field and just write Quark. Right here you will see a tab for query language Quark and inside of here, you can learn how Grok works, why they have created that, etc., etc. But the most basic overview is you always use an asterisk and then you have to create an empty array. And if you would just use that, we would get every content we have. But as you, as you see right here, 
they use and type movie. So right here they filter it, so they want everything off type movie. And then they use a multiple filter where they say the release here should be bigger or equal to 1979. And that's also pretty much what we will do. So right here I will do an const query which will equal to upticks. Now inside of the upticks I will do again the same, so the asterisk and an empty array. Now inside of the empty array I want to use an type since I don't want everything but only of type product. So let's do type underscore type to be exact and double equal mark and this will be of type product. Now right here it would give us every field inside of product but I don't want that. So I will filter it down. I only want the price. I only want the name, the slug and I also want the first image inside the array of images. For that I will create a new type. Let me use the normal string for that. A new type called image URL and this will be the image, the first image inside the array and I want the asset and I want to get the URL. Also let me maybe delete the spacebar and just like that. So what exactly does it mean? We create a new type called image URL and this image URL is just the first image inside the array with the asset and then we get the URL of that. So I will save that and maybe before I do anything else, let me just copy this query right here, also with this bracket. Let me copy that and let me go to localhost 3333 and I will go into vision. Now Sanity has a nice thing where you can check out your query. So I'll paste that right here and I will click fetch. Now as you see, we get all four items. So we get the slug, we get the image URL, the price is null. So I will have to check why that's like that. So let me see. So the error is because I misspelled price. So I have spelled price here correctly. But inside of our product schema, you should write price correctly, of course. Now, if I pretty much save everything and go back and let me fetch again, you will see still the price is null. So let me go to my desk. Let's go to product and let me see if everything is still saved. You see the price has changed. So I will fix that again and we'll come back. So now I have fixed the pricing. Everything, everywhere the price has been added again. So let me go back to vision and let me click fetch again. And as you see, now the price isn't null anymore and we have a price. So that's great. Now what I want to do is also fetch the products. So let's do an const, const products, which will equal to await client. We import client from libsanity. That's the client we have created. And let's write fetch. And inside of here, we'll pass the query. Now let's also do a return JSON. And JSON is a function provided by Remix, so we import that from Remix one node. And right here we just pass the products. And now to get the products in our front end, also here we'll use a function created by Remix, so const empty uh, object for now, which will equal to use loader data. We import that from Remix one React. Now be sure that you import that from Remix one React. Sometimes it imports it from React Router and then you will get an error. So we don't want that. And inside of here, we will pass in generic, which will be type of loader. And now if we save that, you will right here get the products definition. So if you hover over it, or not hover, if you click control spacebar, you will get it right here. But now if you hover over it, you will see um, that it's pretty much undefined. So we don't get any values. And if you would use Prisma, for example, you wouldn't have to do anything. We, will, we would already have our types. But for now, what we will do is create a new file. So I will go into the lib file. I will, so in the app folder, into the lib folder. And inside of here, I will create an interface.ts. Now inside of this interface.ts, I want to create a new interface. So export interface. I will name it product and open it. Right here, we will now have to give our types. And if you can remember, uh, inside of our version, we pretty much get all our types. So price, as you see, is number, name is a string, slug, we get uh, two types back, and image URL is also a string. So let me do that. So first of all, we have our name, which is a string. Then we have our price, which is a number. 
and then we will get our slug which has actually two types but we will only use current which is in string and then under the slug we also get a description which is also of type string and we get an image url which is also of type string now let me save that let's go to index.tsx and if i would just now write inside of here as product which i will import we will still get an error and that's because property products does not exist on type product and that's correct for that to work we will create a new interface and name it i app props let me spell i app props correctly and right here we'll have products which will be of type product which will be an array now why do we use an array symbol right here that's because we get multiple images back and if I only use the product type like that it will tell products that we only get one type but that's not correct so let me delete right here as products and do as I app props now you will see the error has gone and if I hover over products we also see products is of type product array so that's great and that works now in my opinion we can actually continue and map over our products so under the div or inside of the div I will map over them now so we will write products dot map we will get our product and inside of here let's return that now inside of here I want to create a link tag which we will get from remix one react but we have already imported that and I will have to give it an two prop so the two will be an object with upticks and inside of the upticks I want to post it to slash product slash and let's do it let's do something like that product dot slug dot current dot current just like that great and be sure that you use product and not products because later we will name our new file product and then you would get some errors so just do it like that now i want to style our link also so let's give it a class name and the class name will be group and relative let me also close my explorer so we don't see that now inside of the link i want to create a new div and let's style that div so let's give it a class name of w full h will be 56 rounded will be md overflow will be hidden and we will have a group hover which will be opacity of 75 so let me do that and lg will be h72 and we will have an xl which will be in height of 80. let me save that and inside of the div i want to create an image tag so right here i will give it an alt first of all and the alt will be image of product and i will also give it a class name which will be w full h will be full object will be center and object will be contain not cover now also i want to of course give it a source so all i will do is use source and use an object and it will be product.image url just like that let me save that now also a few things i want to do is also add a product name and a product price so under the image tag and under the div i want to create a new h3 tag i will style that h3 let's give it a class name of mt will be 4 text will be small text gray will be 700 and we will get the product dot name now under the h3 tag i want to create a p tag and i will style that with a class name of mt1 text will be again small font will be medium and text gray will be 900 also i want to get here uh, the product dot price so let's write that and also i want to use the dollar symbol so in front of our object i will just use the dollar symbol so let me save that and if i go back to our local host let me reload everything we will right here get our page and if we scroll down we see our four products with the images the name and the pricing but if i would click now on the product so let me click on the airpods right uh, on the macbook right here we will get in 404 not found and that's because the root of product and this dynamic value has not been created so let me go back to the file explorer 
and we will create a new file. So right here, let's click the File Explorer. I will close again everything. And inside of the app and routes, I will create a new file and I will name that file product dot. I will use the dollar sign and name it slug.tsx. Now, what does this route mean? So first of all, we have the route product and then we have a slash. So this dot inside of product dot means just pretty much means a slash. And then we have a dollar sign slug. And dollar sign slug, all it means is it, that the, the slug is a dynamic value. So we could use just AirPods or it could be iPhone. So it's just dynamic. You can pretty much post whatever you want. And also the slug, we can get it through the params and use it with the loader. But right now that's maybe a bit complicated. So I will just do that and you will pretty much understand that. So inside of the product.slug, let me just create an RAFCE. So I will use the shortcut and let me name it product slug and let me save that. And if I go back and go back to our localhost 3000, let me reload that. And if, if I click on any product, so I'll use the uh, MacBook, you will now see we get posted to the, rect, uh, to the correct URL and the URL also works. So now what we will do is style that URL. So we want to show the products and everything else. So I would just say, let's start with that. Or maybe actually before we create the user interface, maybe we should actually get the data first. So I will write export async function called loader. And inside of here, I want to get the loader arcs and I also want to get the params. So I will destructure params and let's open that function. Now we will have to again start by creating a query. So I will write const query equals to again upticks and we start how we always do an asterisk symbol and an empty array. Now inside of this empty array I get a type which will be equal to product so let me write product and I want to use a multiple filter now because I don't want to get all products I only want to get one product that uh, matches our slug. So I will use an and or a double and and I want to get a slug.current and the slug.current should be equal, let's use the normal strings, it should be equal to the params.slug. Now, as I said, with the params, we get the dynamic value inside of slug. So if it's airports, we want to see that the slug.current is equal to the airports slug. So pretty much let's save that. And let's write const data is equal to await uh, client, we will import that from libsanity.fetch and let's pass the query. Now, one thing I see already is we don't want to get an array back, we only get want to get one object back, so we only want to get one product. And if I would just leave it like that, we would get an array back, and I don't want that. So at the end of the array, I will just use array zero, which will pretty much tell sanity. I want to get only the first uh, product inside the array. So we only get one product and that's the correct way and how Sanity also recommends it. So that's finished. Now we will also have to return our data. So we we'll write return JSON. We import JSON from Remix One node and inside of here we pass our data. Now we again want to get it in our front end. So I will write const data is equal to use loader data, which we import from Remix One React, and we will use a generic called type of loader. Now, right here, we would still get no types, as you know, and for that, we will again go to our interface. So let's go to interface.ts, and inside of here, we will again have to create a new interface. So let's do export interface, let's call it product ID. And inside of here, we again get pretty much the same types. So the name, the price, the slug, and a few model, uh, and a few other types. So let's do name, which will be again in string. We get in price, which will be again in number. We will now get our Stripe product ID, which will be a string. And then we will also get our slug, which will be uh, again the type of current, which will be string. Now under the slug, I want to get a quantity. Now right now, uh, we don't get any quantity from sanity and that's correct 
because we will use quantity for zust and at a later stage. So just leave it like that for now. Now under the quantity I also want to get in description. The description will be of type string. And now we will also get our image. So let's uh, write image and image will have a few types. So first of all underscore key which will be in string. We will also get underscore type which will also be of type string. And then we will get an asset which will have two more types. First of all underscore ref which is in string and underscore type which is in string. Now let me save that just as it is and I already see an error but I will just leave it like that and I will come back to it later when we will actually need that error. So I think what we can do now is create our user interface. So let me just delete that return and let's create a new return. I want to create a main element and I will style that with a margin top of 5 and inside of the main I want to create a div and I will style that div with a class name of lg grid. We will have an lg of grid called 2. I want also to have an lg of gap x8 and lg will have an items of start. Now inside of this div I want to create a tab.group which we import from headless UI. So let me write tab. Or let me first uh, import tab. So I will import tab from headless UI React as you see on top right here. And let me close my explorer. And we will write tab.group and let me close that. Now I will style that tab, tab.group. So I will do an as div. And I will also give it a class name. So let's write class name. So let's write flex and flex call reverse. Now inside of this tab group I want to create an image selector. So if I go back, let me reload that. Um, inside of here we will see on the left side we will get images, on the right side we will get text. So to better understand that I will create a um, comment right here and I will write image selector. Now inside of here, first of all I want to create a div. So let's write div and let's style the div. So the class name will be hidden, margin top will be 6. W will be full, max width will be 2XL, MX will be auto and SM will be block and LG will be max width of none. Let me save that. Now inside of this div I want to use tab.list so let's write tab.list. Let me close that and let's style that tab.list. So let's give it a class name which will have a grid. Grid calls will be 4 and gap Will be 6. Now inside of this tab list we will have to map over our images and as I said right now we will get an error. So let me demonstrate that. So we will do data.image.map and we will get our image and let's just return that. And as you see data is possibly undefined. I mean that's okay but actually the error is right here that we can't map over this for images since image right here is shown as an um, object but actually image is an array. So I will go back to interface.ts and right here I should also go to image and create an array. And this will still not fix the error and that's because I forgot one uh, pretty much basic thing and that's because data is still not defined. We don't have any types actually. So let's do that. So right here we'll have to create an interface. I will name it iAppProps again. And inside of here we'll have our data which will be of type product ID. Let me uh, also import that. Um, it shouldn't be product but product ID just like that. Let me save that. And right here we will do an as iAppProps. And if I save that we don't have an error anymore. And right here, let me again change that just to see the actual error we would have. If I would just change that, you would see map does not exist uh, on type uh, XYZ. So let me again do an array so we don't have that error anymore. And as you will see, everything works perfectly. Now inside of this mapped image, I will create a new tab. So right here, tab, and I will just close that. Now we will also have it give it a key because I don't want any errors with React. So let's do image dot underscore key. And I will also have to give a class name. So the class name will be relative 
H will be 24, BG will be white, rounded will be MD, flex, items will be center, you'll have justify, center, text will be small, font will be medium, we'll have uppercase, and we will have text will be gray, 800, cursor will be pointer, and then we will have an hover of BG will be gray, 50, focus will be outline, none, and we will have a focus which will be ring, and focus of ring um, offset will be 2, and, or let's change it to 4 actually, and focus ring opacity of 50. Let me save that. And that's all we need for our tab actually. And now we will get a state created by headless UI. So right here we will get that, which will be selected. And I will just return that. Now this uh, state actually just tells us which image is selected, or in that sense which tab is selected. And with that, we can use it to style our images. So right here, I will do empty brackets. And inside of this empty brackets, I will create a span. And let me style that span. So let's give it a class name of absolute. I will have an inset of zero, a rounded of medium, and an overflow, which will be hidden. Now inside of the span, I want to create an image. And for now, the alt tag will be product image, and we will have a class name, which will be w full, h full, object will be center, and object will be cover. Let me save that. And as you see, the source right now is empty, and that's because we have to do a few things for that. So if we would give it a source as we always do, so an object with product dot something, or not product, sorry, image dot something, we would not get anything. We would only get asset, underscore type, underscore key. That's not what we want. We want a URL. And to get that, we will actually have to create a function or a new file in that sense. So I will do app. Inside of the lib, I want to create a new file called sanity image URL. And let's do an dot ts. Now inside of this file, we have to import an image URL builder from sanity URL. Now let's delete everything that comes under, uh, after san, uh, image URL and let's delete this object. So we import image URL builder from sanity image URL. That's good. One thing I want to also import is the client from sanity and that's pretty much all we need. Now inside of here, I want to do a const builder this will be equal to image URL builder, and I will pass the client. Now we will also have to export a function. So let's do export function URL for. I will get a source, which will be any, and we will do a return builder dot image, and we will pass the source. Now that's saved. Now we can go back to our product dot slug. So let's do that. Now I can delete this. And I will create a new source, which will have an object. We will import the ul4 function that we have just created. We will pass our image and we will use a dot url after this parentheses. Now be sure that you use it after the parentheses and not right inside of here. So only like that, this will work. And if I save that, we won't get any errors. And now I want to finish styling that. So under the span, I will create a new span and let's give it a class name. And this won't actually work like I want to do because inside of this class name, I want to actually use the selected state and I want to style the span based on the state. And for that, I will create a small helper function. So up here, I will do a function which will be class names with an S. And right here, I will spread our classes which will be of type any and inside of here, I want to return classes, which will be dot filter. I want to filter for a Boolean and I want to do a dot join. And I will save that. Now that's looking good. And inside of this class name, I want to use our newly created function called class names. 
and inside of here I will do internally. So if selected is true, we will have a question mark, we'll get ring which is indigo 500 and if this is false I will get a ring which will be transparent so we won't have any color. And now I want to also style that a bit normally without any state so it will be absolute. We will have an inset which will be of zero and rounded which will be MD. We will have a ring which will be two. Ring offset, so let me write ring offset correctly, will be of two. And we will have pointer events none, just like that. That looks great. Now, if I save that actually, let's go right here and you see our images. But that's not exactly how I want it. I want one big image and then these small images. And if I click on them, I want that the big image changes. So actually, let's just do that. Now, under the tab.list and under the div right here, I will create a new tab.panels, panels, not panel, and I will also style that. So let's give it a class name and let's style it with W full and aspect will be W1 and aspect H will also be one. Now, these styles are imported from the plugin that we have um, installed at the start. And with that, we pretty much ensure that the images stay in a certain aspect ratio, so W1 and H1, and that everything, everything pretty much looks the same. And inside of here, I will have now to map over the images again. So data.image.map, I will get the image, and let's return that. Now inside of here, I want to use the tab.panel, so not panels anymore, but panel, and let me close that. I want to give it a key because every time if I map over something, I have to give it a key to prevent react errors. So the key inside of here will be image dot underscore key. And now inside of here, I want to create an image. So let's use the image tag for the source. Let's actually give it right now at the start. I will give it an object. We will use our URL for function. I will pass the image and I will use dot URL after the parentheses. Also, we'll have to give it an alt. So let's do product image. And also let's style that image. So I will do a class name and it will be W full, H will be full, object will be center, object will be cover, and we will have an SM of rounded LG. Now, if I save that and go back, you see, as you see right here, we have one big image and we have our selectors on here. And if I click on each selector, now the MacBook maybe is a wrong example. Let's go back to our local host and let's use the AirPods, that will look better. So we have our AirPods and if I click on each image, you see we have a selector. So that works very good, just as I want it to work. Now on the right, you see we have just white space and we don't want that, we want to have our text, so our data.name, our price, our um, description, and the button, of course, to buy that item. So let's actually do that. So under the tab.group, I will create a new div, and I will have to style that div. So let's give it a class name, which will have an MT of 10. We will have an PX, which will be 4. SM will have PX of 0. We have an SM, which will be March on top of 16, and LG will be March on top of 0. Now inside of here, I will create an h1 tag and this h1 will have a styling. So let's give it a class name of text 3xl and we will have a font which will be extra bold. And also I want to have tracking which will be light or not light, it should be tight. And we will have a text which will be grade 900. And inside of this h1, I will have to pass the name. So we will use the data.name. And if I save that, just to see that, we now get our name, which is the AirPods Max. That's great. Now I want to add a few more things. So under the H1, we want to create a div. And inside of this div, I firstly, I actually want to style that. So let's give it a class name of MT3. And inside of this div, I will create a P tag. And I will also style that P tag with text will be 3XL and text will be gray 900. And inside of here, I want to get the price. So I will use the dollar sign and I will get the data dot price. 
Now under the P tag and under the div tag, I want to create a new div and I want to style that div. So I will give it a class name, which will be text base and text will be gray 700. Now under the P tag and under the div tag, I want to create another div element. So let me do that. Let's style that with a class name of MT6. And under this div or actually inside of this div, I want to create another div. And right here, I will also style that. So let's give it a class name of text base and text will be gray 700. And inside of here, I want to render the description. And to do that, I will use dangerously set inner HTML. I will use a double object and get a underscore HTML. And this will be data.description. So right, one thing you should actually remember is right here we can use dangerously set in HTML only because we have created the content ourselves. Now, if you would have maybe a contact form on your website and would use that like that, this would be a pretty bad practice because you would run in the problem that maybe somebody creates some malicious code and you would render that on your website to your client or to your users. And you don't want to do that. So I would only do that if I know that the content is safe or I have created it myself. So now where we have created that, so the name, the price and the description, we want to create the most important thing, which is the button to buy that product. So under the div with the dangerously set in HTML and under that div, I want to create a new div. So let's style that with a class name of MT of six. And inside of there, I want to create another div so let's do that. Let me style that div with a class name of MT10, flex, and SM will be flex call one. Now inside of this div, I will create a button. And for now, I will give it an on click, which will be just an empty function. And also, I want to give it a class name. So let's do class name. I will uh, write W full, flex will be one. And we will have an BG of indigo 600 border, border will be transparent. And we will have rounded, which will be MD. Let me save that. And then we will also have an padding Y of three. We will also have flex and items will be center. Let's me, let me close the explorer. Then we will have a justify of center. Text will be base font. Let me write text base correctly font will be medium and we will also have a text which will be white we will also have a hover which will be bg indigo 500 now that looks good now we also have to uh, add something to the button since right now it's empty and i will do add to back just like that let me save that let's go back to localhost 3000 and as you see our product page is finished we have our images we have our name of the product, the price of the product, we have the description, and we have the button to add the product to our bag. But if we click on that right now, nothing happens. And that's because we have we are done with the UI, but we aren't done with the logic, or you could say the backend in that sense. So the first thing I want to do is actually to create Sustent, and that's also what we will do right now. So I will go back to our Visual Studio code, and now let's go to our explorer and let me close everything. Let's go into app, lib, and let's create a new file called use card.tsx or actually just .ts, that's fine. Now inside of this file, we will create our Zustand state. And if you're new to Zustand, I would highly recommend to go to Zustand and actually learn more about Zustand. Zustand is actually a pretty good state manager. It's my favorite state manager. And I also think that GitHub is very informative and you will learn also a lot. But I will now create our Zustand state for our card. So the first thing we will do is import create from Zustand. So create from Zustand. And I will also import our product ID interface because we will need it in a second. Now we will create two interfaces and the first one will be interface state and we will get a card which will be of type product ID which will be an empty array and we will also get total items which will be of type number and we will get a total price 
which will also be of type number, and we will get a state called show card, which will be in boolean. And with this boolean, we will then uh, pretty much use it to say if our shopping model, so we will have right here, if we go to back to localhost 3000, a little model where you can pretty much see your items and click on them. And uh, at the end also, of course, check out. And for that, we will use the show card boolean. And then I will also create another interface called actions. And this one will be used to manipulate the data in the state. So the first one, the first one will be add to cart. And right here, we will get an item, which will be of type product ID. And the function will be void. Then we also want to create and remove from cart. Right here, we will also get an item, which will also be of type product ID. And also we'll do in void. And the last one will be in toggle show card, which will be in void. Now void, what does that mean again? Void just means that we don't return anything. So that looks great in my opinion. Now one thing, or now we could actually do two things. First of all, we could create a Zustan state, or we could create a shopping model. And I actually think we should first of all create the Zustan state. And after we have created that, I will create a shopping model. So let's start with that. So we will do an export const use card state. And we will have a create function that we have just imported. And we will pass in generic. And the generic will have the state and the actions. And then also we will get a set and get. So set and get. And now let me create that function. Now TypeScript will complain because we have passed the generics right here, so state and actions, but we haven't initialized them. So that's what we will do right now. So the first thing that we will ask ourselves, how will the state look at the start of the website? So when we just open it, how will it look? And the first thing will be, of course, card will be an empty array because we won't have any items at the start. Also, the total items will be zero. Then we will have a total price, which will also be zero, because if we have total items of zero in the card, we can't have a price. So then we will also have a show card. And at the first start of the website, I actually want the card to be false, so I don't want it to be shown. And only if the user clicks on the button up here on top, on the back, I only want then to change it to a show card true, so the user sees the card. Now TypeScript still complains, that's because we haven't created the actions or we haven't initialized them. So to actually don't show this error, I will just do toggle show card. This will be just a function right now or an empty function. Then I will create an add to card, which will be the same, an empty function. And then I want to create an uh, remove from card, which will also be an empty function for now. So now TypeScript does not complain anymore. And I would say we would start with the toggle show card because that's the easiest one. So right here, we will start off how we always have to do it. We will start in function. We will get our set. Inside of here, we'll have a state. And right here, we will manipulate our show card. And if the show card is, for example, true, we will use the other value. So right here, state dot show card. So with this exclamation mark, we pretty much tell uh, Zustand, if we click this button toggle show card, we want to sh uh, change the state of show card to the uh, opposite value of show card. So if the value currently is true, we will change it to the opposite value, which is false. I hope you understand that. And now we can continue with add to card, which is a bit more complex in that sense. So I will just delete it and write it again. So add to card. We'll again create our function. Right here, we will have to pass our product, which will be of type product ID. And now let me just create a function. Let's also use a comma so the error goes away. Now inside of here, the first thing I want to do is get the card item. So I will do const card equals to get, and I want to get the card data. And now I want to find card items, so I want to get card items that are equal to the product slug. So I will do const card item equals to card dot find. I get 
an item right here. And what I want to do is find the item dot slug dot current, which equals to the product product dot slug dot current. And now we have a problem. So if you think about it a bit, if we have one product, for example, the iPhone 14 Pro, and we have it already in the cart, and if somebody or if we click again on add to cart, we don't want to create a new iPhone 14 Pro in the shopping bag, but we want to change the quantity. So right now we will create an if statement where we will check if this item is already in the bag. And if it is in the bag, all I want to do is add in quantity. So I want to uh, pretty much uh, add plus one to the quantity. And if this is false, I want to create a new product inside of the bag. So we will do an if this card item already exists, I will first want to do an const update card where I will map over our card so card.map we get our item now inside of here I will get an item dot slug dot current and I want to check if it's equal to product dot slug dot current and if that's true we will use internary again so question mark and right here we'll spread our item and our quantity will have item dot quantity plus one now, be sh uh, now check that quantity is spelled correctly. So I will see and it looks good. And now we will also have to do an if uh, it's not true. So else we will just return item. So that looks good. One thing we will have to do now is to set the state. So we will do and set. We will have our state. And now inside of here, we will create again our function. Now inside of here, I will do an card. And card will be now the update card and the total items so let's right here use some uh, comma so the total items will be of uh, type state dot total items plus uh, one because we add one item and then we will also get the total price which will be equal to the state dot total price and this will be plus product dot price now that's great so right here, we check if we already have the item, and we, if we have the item, we just add one quantity. Now, what if it's false? So for that, we will use an else statement. Now, inside of this else statement, I want to just add the product to the card. So what I will do is const updated card. So instead of update card, I will write updated with an D. And this will equal to an array where I spread the card, and I will spread the uh, product. Let's write product correctly. And I will also change the quantity to one because I only want one product in the card since the user only clicks once. And now we will again have to create our set function. So let's do set, we get our state and let's create that. Now inside of here, we will have our card which will be now the updated card and we will have total items. Uh, right here we should use some comma, so total items which will be state dot total items plus one since we only create one and then we will also have total price which will be just state dot total price plus the product dot price so that's great we have now finished the add to cart function or action however you want to see that and now we have to create our remove from cart so i will just delete again this and let's write it again so remove from cart we will get our product, which will be of product ID, and then we will create our function. Now inside of here, I want to set the state. We don't have to do any if clauses or anything since we only actually want to subtract our items. So let's do and set, we'll get our state and let's create the function. Now inside of here, I will get our card and card will be now state.card.filter and I want to filter for the item, which is so item dot slug dot current. And I want to see which is not equal to the product dot slug dot current. So that looks good. Now we will also have to do total items and total price. So total items will be state dot total items. And this will be minus one. So we subtract one. And we will have a total price, which will be state 
dot total price or not all total items but total price which will also be minus product dot price and now we are finished actually with sustent so our logic is finished and now we can create our shopping model but before i continue i want to again give a small overview so let's summarize what we have just done so we have uh, created a state so first of all our noble normal state with which we just read our values and then we have created an interface which is an actions where we manipulate the data inside our state and then we have to create our normal sustent state and for that we have to initialize our states so card is of course empty at the way the items are zero the price is also zero and we don't want to show the show card then for toggle show card, we just toggle the state of true or false. For add to card, we check if the item already exists. And if it does not exist, we create a new product. And if it does exist, we just add a quantity of one. And from remove for card, we just filter that the slug.current does not equal the uh, product.slug.current. And for the items, we just subtract. And for the price, we also just subtract the total price by the product price. So. We are now finished with that. And what I would do now is actually create a shopping cart model. So let's go to components and let's name it shopping cart model .tsx. Now inside of here, I will do an RAFCE and I will just leave it like that. Now inside of here, I want to get our Zustan state actually. And for that, I will do const data equals to use cart state. So that's the hook pretty much that we will use. And inside of here, you'll get our state. And then we want our state.card. So right here, we get all of our card data. So this will be an array. And depending on the time, it will be either an empty array, so we don't have any items, or it will be an array with multiple items. And under this, I want to create a const card state. And with this, we will pretty much see if the card state is currently true or if it's false. And based on that, we can show our shopping cart model. So right here, it will be state.showCard. And then I will also want to get our const toggle show card. So this will now be an action where I will toggle the act uh, our show card. So right here, it will be use card state. We get our state and I want to use the state.toggle show card. Now, also, I want uh, the const remove items or item, and this will be equal to use card state. We again get our state, and then we want to get our state dot remove from card. That looks good. And at the end, I also want to get the total uh, items, or not the total items, but the total price. So I will do in const total, and this total will equal to use card state. We again get our state. And we want a state dot total price, just like that. It's got all of our data, and now we can create the UI for the shopping cart model. So the first thing I will do is use an return, and I want to return a transition, which we import from headless UI React, and this will be a transition dot root. Now inside of this transition dot root, I want to give a few uh, attributes or uh, props. So the first prop will be show. And with this, we will pretty much tell Headless UI when to show the transition and when not to show the transition. So if show card or not show card, but if card state is false, this will be uh, not shown. But if it will be true, it will be shown. And also, I want to show the transition dot root as a fragment. So a fragment will be um, these empty brackets. So right here, let's write fragment, which we import from React. Now let me delete this, these empty brackets. We don't need them. And inside of the transition root, I want to create a dialog. So let's write dialog. And I will open that and close that. Now inside of here, I want to give a class name. So the class name will be relative. And Z will be 10. And also we will do an as. So we want to show the dialog as in div. And we'll have to give it a function, which will be on close. So when we click outside of the dialog, we will want to toggle our show card so that state changes from true to false. Now inside of this dialog, we will create a transition.child 
and right here we'll have to style it. And the first thing I want to do inside of here is uh, to give it an S. So the S will be in fragment. And now we will have to style this transition.child. So how does it enter? Where does it enter from? Enter to, leave to. And now you could of course write it yourself, but as I said, just go to my GitHub and just copy that. It will be much easier since right here we don't get any help from the Tailwind plugin. So just copy that and paste it right here. And now we can continue inside of the transition.child. I want to create a div and I want to style that div. So I will give it a class name, which will be fixed. We'll get an inset, which will be zero. BG will be gray of 50 or not 50, but 500. And BG will be an opacity of 75. Also, I want to get a transition opacity just like that. That looks great. And now after the transition child, I want to create a new type or not a new type, but a new element. And this will be in div. Now inside of this div, I want to create a class name, which will be fixed. Uh, inset will be again zero and overflow will be hidden. Now let me also close my explorer. And inside of this div, I will create a new div and we will style that with a class name, which will have an absolute. Inset will be also zero, and we will have an overflow, which will be hidden. Now inside of this div, I want to create another div. So let's write div, and let's give it a class name. So we will have pointer, um, events will be none, and then we will also have fixed. Inset of y will be zero, and write will be zero, Flex, we will have a max width, which will be full, and we will have a padding left, which will be 10. Now, inside of this div, we again have to use a transition.child. So let me write transition.child and let me close that. Now, inside of here, I will again give it an S, and the S will be again a fragment. And we will also again have to do a um, styling just like here. And again, I will copy that from GitHub. That's just easier for you and me, and just leave it like that. Now, inside of the transition.child, I will have to um, import again, and or not import, but I will have to use the dialog.panel. And right here, I want to style that dialog.panel. So let's give it a class name, and it will have a pointer events of auto. So let's write that. And then I will also have a W of screen and max width will be md. Now inside of this dialog.panel, I want to create a div, so let's do a div, and let's also style that, and it will have a flex, h will be full, flex will be call, and overflow y will be scroll, and bg will be white, and we will have a shadow, which will be xl. Now inside of this div, I want to create a new div, and let's style that div. So let's give it a class name of flex will be one. Overflow y will be auto. And we will have an px of four, py of six, and sm of px six. So now inside of this div, let's create another div. And this will be also the last div for now. So let's do a div. Let's give it a class name, which will have flex. Items will be start. And we will have a justify which will be between. Now also I want to create a dialog.title inside of here. So let's do dialog.title and I will write shopping cart. We will also style that title. So let's give it a class name. We will have a class name of text will be LG, font will be medium and text will be gray 900. Now under the dialog.title, I want to create a div and I want to style that div, so let's give it a class name, which will be margin left of three, flex, h will be seven, and items will be center. That looks good. Also, I want to create a button, and inside of this button, let's give it a type, or let me uh, first of all save that, and the type of the button will be type button, and we will also give it a class name, so minus margin will be two, padding will be two, text will be gray of 400, and hover will be text gray of 500. 
Now also I will give it an on click, which for now will be just an empty function. Or actually it won't be an uh, empty function since we already have added all the sustent states. So the on click will actually be a toggle show card, just like that. And inside of the button, we want to now use an SVG since this button is used uh, as an X mark. So we want to close the shopping cart with this button. So let's again go to heroicons.com and I will now search for an X mark and copy the JSX. Once that's copied, I will paste it back inside of here and I will actually don't have to change the style since W6 and H6 uh, is enough for me. Let me save that, let's go to localhost 3000 and you won't see nothing. And that's because we don't show it anywhere. So for that, let's go to root.tsx and under the main element, I will import that. So shopping cart model, let's import that. Let's close that and save that. And if I reload the page right now, you'll still see nothing. And that's because I want to go now to the navbar.tsx and what I want to do is now, if I click this shopping cart button, I want it to show right here. So I want to show the overlay on the right side. So let's actually do that. And for that, again, I will have to get our sustain state. So first of all, we will get our const toggle cart, which will be an use cart state. And we will get again our state and we get our state dot total, uh, not total items, but toggle show cart. And then I want to also get our const total items, which will equal to use card state. I again will get our state and our state dot total items, just like that. Now right here, you know, we have hard coded to zero. Now we can actually change that to the total items. And right here, where our button is with an empty uh, function, I will delete the empty function and use our toggle card state. Now, if I save that actually, go back to localhost 3000 and click on the shopping bag, you will see our shopping cart and you will see also our X button. And if I click on that X button now, the shopping cart closes. So that works great. So since it now works, we can actually continue with our shopping cart model. So what I will do is again, under the SVG, under the button and under the two following divs, I want to create pretty much an if statement. So if our items inside of the array are smaller than one, so that means if they are zero, I want to show a dummy state where it just says, please add items to the basket and a button where you add the items. But if that's false, I want to show the items. So let's do that. So if data.length is smaller than one, We'll use the ternary, so question mark. And right here, if that's false, we will just do right now this. Now inside of here, let's do two divs. So the error is gone. And now let's style that first div. So if that's true, so we don't have any arrays or no items inside of the array, I want uh, to style that div. So I will give it a class name of flex, w full, h will be full, flex will be call, items will be center and justify will be center. Now save that and I want uh, to create an h1 inside of this div. So let's create an h1. Let's also style that h1. So it will be text 5xl and text will be center. And also I will give it a text or a value. So the value will be please add items to your to your bag just like that. Let's also use an exclamation mark. And under that H1, I want to create a button where we close the model. So let's give it first a name of add items and let's give it a class name. So it will be BG indigo um, 600, PX will be four, PY will be two, rounded will be LG, text will be white, margin top will be six, and text will be XL. And also we'll have to use an on click. So let's do an on click handler and we will do a toggle card or a toggle show card. So we close the card if we click on that button. So now let's go back to your website. Now let's click on the shopping bag and you will see we have the dummy data. And that's again because we don't have any items inside our array. 
So now let's also code uh, that we have some items in the way. And for that, I will create a delete that div and I will create a new div and let's style that div. So let's give it a class name, which will be MT8. Inside of here, I will create another div and I won't style that. And inside of this div, I will create an UL. And now let's style that UL. So let's give it a class name, which will be minus margin Y or six. Divide will be Y. And then we will also have a divide of gray 200. Now inside of here, we will pretty much map over our products or over the products inside of our state. So let's do that. Data dot map, we will get our product and let's also get an IDX. So pretty much the index and let's return that. Now inside of here, I will create a list item. So an LI and I will give it a key since I don't want any react errors and the key will be IDX. And the class name for that will be flex and py of six. Now inside of here, I want to create a div and I will give it a class name. So class name will be h24, width will be 24 and object will be cover and object will be center. Now inside of here, I want to use an image tag. Let's give it an alt of product image and let's also do a class name which will be h full width full object will be cover and object will be center. Let's uh, save that. And for the source, let's delete the string and let's give it a function with an URL for. So the function that we have created, I've imported that from um, lib sanity image URL. And right here, let's go back. Let's pass it our um, product dot image and we want to have the first image in the array so I will use an array with zero and under after the parentheses I want to get the dot URL just like that and if I save that we don't have any errors anymore. Now under the image tag and under the div tag I want to create a new div and I will style the div so I will give it a class name which will have a margin left of four. We will have flex, flex will be one and flex will be call. Now under this div or inside this div actually, I will create another div and I will leave that empty. And inside of this div, I will style that with a class name of flex. Justify will be between. Then we will have a text of base and font will be medium. Also, I will give it a text gray of 800. Now inside of this div, I want to create an h3 tag. So let's create that. And inside of here, I want to create a link or I want to import that link actually from Remix One React. So I don't know, have I imported it? No, so let me import that. And now inside of this link, I want to first use the product.name. And if uh, what I want to do now is to link to that product. So I will use an two. We will use again an object with optics. This will go to slash product and slash we will use the dynamic value of product.slug.current. Let's save that. And now we can continue with the price. So under the link and under the h3 tag, I will create a p tag and I will give it a, the price. So product will be dot price. Also I use the dollar sign right here. And also I will give it a class name of margin left of four. Let's save that. Now, I think we are pretty much done with that. So we map over, over our products and we get our product. And now what I want to do is to also show the quantity and a button to remove the item. And for that, we will go under the P tag and under the two following divs and create a new div. So div and let's give it a class name, which will have flex, flex of one. Items will be end, justify will be between and text will be small. Now inside of here, I will create a new P tag and I will give it a name of quantity, which will be a uh, product dot quantity. Let's also style that. So let's give the P tag a class name, which will just be text gray 500. Now under this P tag, I want to create a new div. So let's do div. And I will style that with a class name of flex. So class name flex. And inside of here, I want to create a button where we can remove the item. 
So let's do a button and do a type of button and a class name, which will be of font medium. Text will be indigo 600. And if we hover on it, we want to do a hover of text indigo 500. Let's also give it a name of remove. And now we will also have to use an on click handler since we want to remove an item with this uh, button pretty much. So let's do an on click. And right here we will do a uh, function with remove item. And we want to pass our product right here. So let's save that. And right now, as you see, there's no ability to add a product. So if I click add to bag, you will see still our bag is empty. And that's because we haven't pretty much implemented the um, functionality for that. So what I will do is go back to our Visual Studio code and let's open the product.slug.tsx. And right here, we again have to initialize first of all uh, our sustent state. So I will do a const add to cart which will equal the use card state, which we import from lib use card. And inside of here, we get our state and we want our state dot add to card, just like that. that. That's great, that looks good. And what I want to do now is go down a bit where we have our button right here with our empty function. Let me delete that empty function. And right here, I will actually do pretty much the same that we have done with the remove from card. So I will do an add to card and I will pass the data. And what again is the data? So if you didn't know, let's go up again. Right here we get our data from the remix loader and the data is just the product. So what we do right here is just we add to card and we pass that product. So the product is just called data right here. Now if I save that and go back and if I click on add to back now, you will see the number of total items changes right here. And if I click on that shopping bag right now, you'll see our shopping cart with the items inside of here. We have the name, we have the image, we have the quantity, we have a remove button, and we have the pricing. Now, one thing that hasn't been added is right here or on the bottom and checkout button. So I would say let's do that now. And for that, I would go back to the shopping cart model right here. And now we will have to implement that. So to do that, we will right here go to our dialog.panel and above the div, above dialog.panel, we will create a new div. Or actually we won't create a new div, but we will again use an if clause. So again, we want to see right here if the length is again smaller than one. So if we don't have any items in the array, we don't want to show any button. So we don't want to show a checkout button. But if we have items, we want to show that checkout button. So let's do right that. If data.length is smaller than one, we will use the ternary. We will do a null. So if that's true, it's null. But if that's false, I want to show in div. And let's save that for now. And now let me give it a class name. So the class name will be border top and border will be gray 200. PX will be four. PY will be six and SM will have a PX of six. Now inside of this div, I want to create another div. Let me save that for now. And let me style that div. So let's give it a class name of flex, justify between, and text will be base, font will be medium, and text will be gray 900. That looks good. Now inside of this div, I want to show the subtotal. So let's create two P tags actually. And the first p tag will just name uh, we will just name subtotal, and in the second one we want to show the total. So I will use the dollar sign and the total, just like that. And now under the div, so under the two p tags and under the div, I will create another p tag, and right here I will give it a class name of margin top 0 0.5. Text will be small, and text will be gray 500. Now inside of here, I will just write shipping and tax will be calculated at checkout. Just like that, but you can write whatever you want. Now under the P tag, I want to create a new div tag. So let's write div and let's style that with a margin top of six. Now inside of here, I want to use the form 
a component from Remix1 React. So I will import that from Remix1 React and we will give it a method which will be post and we will give it an action which will be buy, so slash buy. Right now we don't understand what it means, but we will use this for method which will house our button to check out to post to our API buy and with this API, it will pretty much redirect us to the Stripe checkout page. But for now, let's just finish the user interface. So inside of here, I will use an input, which will be type hidden, and I will give it a name of card data, and I will give it a value of json.stringify, um, and we'll pass the data. So just like that. Also, I want to create a button under the input, so let's do a button. It will have the type of submit, so let's do submit. It will have a class name, which will be flex, W will be full, items will be center, justify will be center, rounded will be MD, we'll have a border and a border of transparent. Let's save that to format. Then we will also have an BG of indigo. 600, px of 6, py of 3, text will be base, font will be medium, and we will have a text of white. Now inside of here, I want to name the button and let's give it a check out. So just like that. Now let's come back to the input type hidden. And what does that mean? So first of all, the input is type of hidden. So we don't see that on the screen and that's good. We don't want to see that. We just give it a name and we give it a value of uh, data and we just stringify that. And why do we do that? Later on, as I said, we'll have the API called buy where we redirect to the Stripe page. And to do that, we will have, have to give it the items since on the checkout page from Stripe, we will show us those items again where you can see the pricing, uh, the image and the name. So that's what we do right here. But on the later stage, we'll see that again and you will also understand that better. But for now, let's actually save that and let's go back. Let's uh, click add to back of our app ports. So, that's, so I will do add to back. I will click on our shopping cart and right here you will see everything. So we have our item again with the price, the quantity. And on the bottom, you now see the subtotal, which is $600, which is correct. We have this text with shipping and text will be calculated at checkout and we have our button of checkout. And maybe let's test out something. Let's go right here on our button on Tech Connect. So I will click on our logo. It will redirect us to the index page. I will scroll down a bit. Let's click on the iPhone 14 Pro. We see it right here. We see the images and let's also click add to bag. Now in our bag, you see now these two items. Our subtotal is also uh, the same, or not the same, it has changed, but uh, that's $600 plus $1,200, so that equals to $1,800. But if we test out now checkout, so if we click on that button, you will see we get redirected to slash buy, but that's in 404 because we haven't created that. Now for that, we will now go into the section of Stripe and pretty much create the Stripe checkout. So to continue with Stripe, I will now go back to our Explorer. I will close everything and inside of the app and inside of the routes, I will create a new route called buy.tsx. Now, I won't use RAFCE because with that command, I create a UI and user interface, but I don't want to do that with buy. I want to use buy as an API route. And for that to work, all I have to do is now to export an async action. So not a loader anymore. I don't want to load data, but I want to post data. And to do that, all I have to do is an export async function. Let's write function correctly, which will be an action. I will get um, the action arcs. So the type will be action arcs. And I want to open that function. Now right here, I want to get the request object. And I want to check if the request method is imposed. And if it's not imposed, so in get, for example, I want to uh, pretty much throw an error or return an error. So if request dot method uh, does not equal post, I will return JSON, which we import from Remix one node. I will give a message 
which will be method not allowed, um, just like that. And I will give an four or five, just like that. So now I want to get the form data. So if you go to the shopping cart model, you know that we post our data. So right here, I post the value. So I post the array of items. And now I want to get them in our API route. So for that, I will do const form data will equal to await request dot form data. And I also want to get the value. So right now what you would do is form data dot get and right here we would get our card data, for example. I don't want that. So I will just do const values equals to object dot form entries and we will pass the form data. So that looks good. And the items that we get, I will just do that. So const items will equal to values dot card data as string. Now as string is just uh, to show uh, items that we have in type of string. Now let me also check if I actually named that card data because I can't remember. So let me double check. So it's called card data. I will copy that and paste that just to be sure. So that looks good. And what I want to do now is actually create a function that I will call inside of this action. So I don't have to code a lot of here. I will create dedicated two dedicated functions actually. And to do that, we will go into the app folder, into the lib folder. And inside of here, I want to create a new file called stripe.server.ts. And now as you see, every file that we have created beforehand was just the name and the ts ending. But inside of here, I have named it stripe.server.ts. So why did I use stripe.server.ts? If I would not use the server keyword, I would allow Remix to pretty much bundle the code on the client, but also on the server. But I don't want to do that because the uh, code should only stay on the server since I will use a secret key that I don't want to show the public. So that's why I use a server keyword inside of this file. And now to start this file, I will create actually two functions. And the first function will be used to get the domain URL. Now, if you didn't know, if we go back to localhost 3000, I will copy that and I will paste that inside of here. You will see that we have an HTTP keyword and we have this right here. Now, let's give us, I will give you a small lesson what that means. So the HTTP in that sense is the protocol. And everything you see right here, so this localhost 3000, is called the host. So the protocol can be actually two different values. Right now we have an HTTP value, but it can also be an HTTPS value. So if we deploy to Vassal, for example, it will show HTTPS. And the host pretty much gives us the name of the URL. So right now it's localhost 3000, but if we deploy it later, it could be called very cool website or whatever your domain is called. So to pretty much now get our domain URL, I will create a function. So let's write export function get domain URL. And I want to get the request, which is of type request. And let's open that function. Now inside of here, the first thing I want to do is get the host. So pretty much this URL path. So uh, for example, localhost 3000. So let's do const host equals to request dot headers uh, dot get. And right here, I want to get the x uh, minus forward minus host. And if this is uh, undefined, I want to get the request dot headers dot get. And inside of here, I want to get the host. So what does that mean? The x forward host is pretty much a CDN thing. And if we don't have SCDN, we will just get our host. So with that, we pretty much now get our, our domain prefix, so our host, and we can now continue to get our protocol. But one thing before we do that, I want to also give an if statement. So if we don't get a host, uh, we will pretty much throw a new error. So throw a new error. And the message would be could not find the URL, just like that. So right now we are safe. We definitely know we have a host, so we can now get our protocol. So let's do const protocol. This will equal to host.includes 
And if it includes local host, I want uh, to use internally. So we will get use HTTP. But if we don't use local host, I want to use HTTPS and let's use the strings for that. What we will have to do now is to return that. So I will return and let's use upticks. And inside of here, we will use our protocol. And then we will have to use a and then, as you know, we have, if we click, uh, copy again this website URL, use, uh, and now if we just go back to our website, let's copy the domain URL and let's just copy that to see how it looks. So again, we have our protocol right here. And if I delete the protocol, so you see right here, we have a colon and two slash signs. And that's what we have to do right here. So we use our colon and two slashes and we will pass our host. So now we are finished with our get domain URL function. We have our protocol, we have our host. So in general, we have now our URL. And what I want to do now is actually create our Stripe session. So let's create a new function. So let's do export const get Stripe session. And this will be an async function. And we will also get a few items. So inside of here, we will get first of all items, which will be of type string. And we will get the domain URL, which is also of type string. And then we will just create an arrow function and let's close that. Now, another thing I want to do is also give the type right here of promise and pass in generic, which is string. Now, as you see, we have a TypeScript error. And if we hover above it, you will see a function whose declared type is neither void nor any must return a value. And that's true, we have to return a value since that's not a void function anymore inside of here. For now, I will just return a string with hello, but we will change that of course later. So now we have to initialize stripe. So what I will do is in const stripe equals to new. And now we need the stripe object. So I will import stripe, import stripe from stripe, and let's right here add this new Stripe uppercase. And now what we will have to do is actually add our secret key right here. And let's do a bit of configuration also right here. So let's open an object and we will use an API version, which is 2022, uh, 11, 15. And we will use TypeScript, which will be true. So right here, we'll have now to add our secret key. And to do that, we will have to go to the Stripe website so stripe.com and if you want to learn more about stripe they have a very beautiful website so i would highly suggest you guys to go through it but i will click now uh, to my dashboard and i've already opened that and right here on top left i will create a new account and i will name it tech connect the country of operation you can use whatever you want i will use united states and i will click create account now we will have to confirm with your password. So I will click continue. And now let's wait for a second. So now that's done. What we have to do now is go to developers and under the developers tab, you will see the secret key. So I will click reveal secret key and I will click to copy. Now right here, let's go to the explorer. I will close everything and create a new .env right in the root actually, not in the folder, so .env. And now we will have to give it a name. So what I will do is use a stripe secret key and everything will be uppercase. And let's give it a value of the secret key we have just copied. Now right here, I will just name the uh, copy the name of stripe secret key so I can paste it. And let's go to stripe server.ts and let's delete the string right here completely. And what we will have to do now is in process and it will be lowercase process.env and I will paste the name. Right now TypeScript will complain a bit and that's because it does not know if it's a string of undefined and we will do an as string just like that. Now inside of here I want to actually get our items and uh, pretty much convert them to an actual object because right now, right now it's stringified if you can remember. So what I will do is const data object is equal to json.pass and I want to pass our items just like that. Now what I will do now is actually create the session for Stripe. So what I will do is const session 
equals to await stripe dot checkout dot sessions dot create. And inside of here, the first thing we will need is the mode. And the mode right here will be payment. Then we will have to use a payment method type. So payment method types, which will be an array with the value of card. Then we will have to use line items. And for now, line items will be an empty array, but we will change that, of course. We'll also get a success URL. And we will also get a um, cancel URL. So let's write cancel URL. So now we will have to give an URL where the success URL or the cancel URL will post to. So I will delete the normal strings and use upticks. And right here I will use our domain URL. And then I want to post to slash payment and to slash success. And with the cancel URL I will also use upticks. I will also use the domain URL and I want to post to the slash payment and to the slash cancel or cancelled actually. So now I will go back to the explorer. I will close everything, go to the app, to the routes and inside of here I will create two new files or two new routes actually. So the first one will be payment.success and this shouldn't be an empty file but it should be an .tsx and I will create a new file called payment.cancelled.tsx. Now again, if you can't remember, the dot in this name just means that we have a slash. So right now the route is payment slash cancelled. And for the cancelled route, I won't actually do much. All I would do is right now create an RAFCE function, so the shortcut. Let's name it payment cancelled. And let's just return a, let's say, let's return a h2 tag. Let's give it a name and we will just say payment failed, you will not be charged. That's why charged correctly. So that looks good in my opinion. Now for the payment success, I actually want to do a bit more. So again, let's do an RAFCE. Let's write payment success. And now let's return empty brackets for now. And inside of this empty brackets, I want to use a div and I will style that div. So let's give it a class name and we will use an H of a 90 viewport height. And if you didn't know, with Tailwind, you can pretty much use this array and inside of there, you can use a custom value. So you don't have to use um, pretty much Tailwind's values with H96, for example. But inside of the array, you can use your custom value. So you could write VH or pixels, etc. Now we will use a flex. We will have a flex of call. Items will be center. Justify will be center. Over, uh, overflow will be hidden. And W will be full. Now inside of this div, I will create another div. I will style that with a class name of BG white. Padding will be 6 and MD will be MX Auto. Now inside of this div, I will create another div and I will style that div and I will give it a class name of text center. And inside of this div, I want to create an H3 tag. I will give it a name of your order was successful. And also I will style that. So let's give it a class name, which will be MD of text to XL. Text will be base, text will be gray 900, and we will have a font of semi bold, and text will also be center. Let's save that. Now, under the H3, I want to create a P tag, and let's give it a name of thank you for your uh, order. Payment was um, successful. I think that's good. I will also style that, so let's give it a class name. And this will be just text gray 600 and margin y will be 2. And under this p tag, I will create another p tag and I won't style that p tag and I only will say have a good um, day! Exclamation mark. So now under the p tag, I want to create a div and let me style that div. So let's give it a class name of py10 and text will be center. And under this div, I want to create a link which we import from Remix One React. And I want to give it a two. So two will be for now, or not for now, it will actually be just the index page, so the slash. 
And I will also style that uh, link. So let's give it a class name. It will be PX12. BG will be Indigo 600. Hover will be BG Indigo 500. And rounded will be LG. Then we will have text, which will be white. Font will be semi bold. And I actually think all we need is padding Y3. Now I will also give it a name, which will be just go to home page. Just like that. Let me save that. And we can now also test this URL. So I will go to localhost 3000. And right here, let's do in slash payment slash success. And you see, we have our success page. And if this is false, so if we have a canceled state, so let's go to canceled and you see payment failed, you will not be charged. So now we are actually pretty much done with creating our Stripe uh, server.ts. And what all we have to do now is actually create our line items since right now they are only an empty array. So for that, we have to map over our data object and get our products. So let's do that. We will have a const uh, line items and this will equal to the data uh, object and we will map over it. We will get a product and this product will be of type product ID, which we uh, import from our interface. And then we will get our arrow function. Now inside of here, we will return it, but we will return an object. So be sure of that. And now we will have to give it a price. So the price will actually be the Stripe product ID. So let's write product dot Stripe product ID. And as you know, we haven't implemented that. So to do that, let's go back to our Stripe page and let's go to the um, products page. And under all products, you will see we don't have any products right now. So let's click add products. And right here, all we have to do is actually add the products that we have created in our sanity page. So let me check if our sanity uh, server is still open. And yes, it's still open. So let's again go to localhost 3333. I will open that. And just to show you how it works, all you do is go to your product. And for now, let's just uh, use the Apple Studio display. So it will load and I will copy the name. I will go to products. I will paste that. Let's see the pricing of that. The price will be $1,600. So I will copy that. And under price, let me paste that. I will now use the dollar sign uh, or the dollar currency and it will be a one-time payment. Now also add an image right here. So I have now uploaded the image right here as you see. And what I will do now is save the product. And once the product is saved, you will see right here under the pricing uh, table, you will have an API ID. And what we will do now is copy that and I will go to my sanity e-commerce and under the product I've just created, which is an Apple Studio display, I will paste the Stripe product ID right here and I will click publish. And now I will do that for the other three products. And once I'm finished, I will come back. So I have now added all products and all Stripe product IDs. Now be sure that everything has been published and that all that you check also that everywhere the Stripe product ID is added. And right here also you see it under the products tab in Stripe that everything has been added. Now if I go again back to localhost 3000 and I will go back to the Visual Studio code. And then let's close the terminal and right here in the stripe.server.ts, let's continue because we need a few other fields. We will also need the quantity and the quantity will the, be the product.quantity and also you will have to add a comma. So right here we'll also have to add a few other um, fields. So the first one will be the quantity, which will be the product.quantity. Then I will also use an adjustable quantity so the user can pretty much change the quantity at the checkout page and it will be enabled which will be true we will have a minimum which will be one and we will have a maximum which will be 10. so what we have to do now is delete this array right here this empty array and we will pass the line items right here so now we will have to save that and before i forget that right here we return hello I don't want to return hello. I want to return the session dot URL. So either the success URL or the cancel URL. And TypeScript gives us an error, so I will do an as string and save that. 
Now our buy API is still not finished because we now have to use this um, Stripe uh, session or get session function actually. So what I will do right here under the const items, I will do in const Stripe redirect URL and I will do an await get Stripe session and then I will pass the items and I will pass the get domain URL which we import and I want to pass the request. So let's write request right here. Perfect. Now right here I also want to return the or re redirect the user to the Stripe uh, checkout URL. So I will do an return redirect and I want to redirect to the Stripe redirect URL. Now this actually looks really good. One thing you should uh, you need to do right here in our dev server, we have to restart it since we have created an ENV and for it to populate, we have to restart the server. So I've restarted that and right here, localhost 3000 has reloaded. And I think we should now just check it out if it works because I actually have no clue. So let's go to the airports max and let's click the images. They work, that's good. Let's click add to back. Now you see the items or the number of items changes. Let's also add, I don't know, let's add the Apple MacBook. Let's click also add to bag. Now we have two items in our shopping cart. So the AirPods and the MacBook, that looks good. The price is also correct because if you add the MacBook price and the AirPods price, we uh, come to $2,800, so that's good. So now I will click the checkout page and we will see if everything works. And as you see, we get redirected to the Stripe checkout, which is pretty great. One thing you will see, for me everything is in German, but uh, for you it will be your local uh, language. And as you see, we can also here change the quantity. So if I go back to the code, to stripe.server.ts, that's this adjustable quantity. So with that, we can change our quantity. And as you see also, the maximum is 10. So if I click this plus, I can't add more than 10. It tells me in German that uh, the maximum is 10. So that's great. Now I will leave it at one and let's actually test the, tame, the payment. So I will do an email of john at john.com. So for the card data, we won't use a real one. We will use the Stripe demo card data. So it will be just the 4.2. And for the date, we will also just use 4.2. And for the CVC, the same. Now for the name, I will just use John, or not John, I will use actually Marshall. And the country, it does is not important. And I will just give it a name. And now I will click pay. As you see, now it loads and we get redirected to our success page. And it tells us your order was successful. Thank you for your order. And right here, also our items in the card change. We have now zero because we have already paid. Now let's go to our Stripe ta uh, tab. I will go to payments and right now it will load and you see we have a success payment of $2,800. And if I click on it, you will see we have two items, the AirPods Max and the MacBook Pro. So actually the everything works. We also have here the customer, as you see, which is me. So everything works and if I click back, we get redirected. If I click on shop now, we get uh, redirected to our products. So our website is fully functional and it works perfectly. Now, one thing we have to do is to actually deploy this website to Vercel. So that's what we will do right now. To deploy to Vercel, we first have to create a Git repository. So that's what we will do right now. So I will name it sanity-ecommerce. Uh, I won't give it a description and I will leave it at public, but you can change it to private, of course. And let's click create repository. Now GitHub will give us a few pretty much instructions to create a repository. So the first thing we'll do is uh, git init. So right here, I will kill our dev server. I will do a clear. And now what you should check is that you are in the root file. So for us, that's sanity ecommerce YouTube. And now to create a git repository, you should go to root directory and for me that's sanity minus e-commerce YouTube and in here I will do an git init. So now uh, in we initialize an empty git repository and inside of here you should now do an git add everything that's within point 
Now it gives us a uh, warning that we pretty much will also submit sanity and that's uh, no problem for us. So what I will do now is clear because I don't want to see this annoying error. And now I will commit our first message. So right here, I will just copy that, paste that. And for the message, I will change it to finished website and click enter. Now we have committed our files. I will now create a branch. So I'll copy and paste. Then I will add our remote origin. So I'll paste it right here. And now the last uh, push we have to, or the last thing we have to do is actually to push our code. So I'll copy that, paste it down here and click enter. Now our code gets pushed to our GitHub repository. I will reload the page. And as you see, we have now our code right here. So that works and that's great. Since we have now created the GitHub repository, all we have to do is to deploy to Vassal. And for that, you will go to vassal.com slash new. And right here you will see Sanity e-commerce. And I cl can click import and it will give it a name. So that's fine for me. We will use the framework preset of Remix and we'll have to add our environment variables. So I will go to uh, close our terminal and go to the .env and I will just copy it and paste it right here. Russell will do all the work and all I will do now is click deploy. And once that's finished, I will come back to you. So what do we see now? Our code has been pushed and we have now deployed our website. So if I click on here now, you will see our website will load. We have our products and if we click on our product, for example, our MacBook, and if I add it to back, we will have again our shopping cart where we will have our MacBook inside of there. I will now click checkout and you will see that we get redirected to Stripe checkout. And maybe let's again just test it out. So I will again do and John at um, john.com. For the card data, I will do again the four two numbers. And the same is also for the date and also for the CVC. And the name will be Marshall and the country will be US and I will just use a few numbers and I will click pay. Now this will load and this will redirect us in a second to our success page. As you see, payment slash success and it tells us your order was successful. Thank you for ordering. So that's great. Our website is working. So the last thing I want to do now is actually deploy our Sanity Studio so I don't have to op always open localhost 3000 but I, that I can go to an actual website. And to do that, I will again open my terminal. I will clear that. I don't want to see that. I will kill our uh, Sanity uh, server. And inside of the Sanity folder, what I want to do now is actually just run one command. And that will also be really quick. So just run npm run deploy. And that's all we need. If you now click enter, Sanity will do all the hard work. We'll give it just a name. So I will name it Sanity, e-commerce, e Marshall, um, something like that. And I will click enter. And now you will see it will be really quick, maybe 30 seconds, and it will be deployed to the internet. So let's wait a second. So right now it's already finished. I didn't even look away and it's done. So what I will do now is just copy this URL and I will go to Chrome and I will just enter it or paste it actually. And you will see we will be now in Sanity Studio. Everything loads. I'm connected with my account uh, actually. And if uh, I click on the product, you already see we have all products inside of here. I mean, isn't that great? Everything works perfectly. So we are finished. We have deployed our website. We have deployed Sanity. And now all is done and we can go and enjoy our day.